Okay. Well, it's going to sound very chaotic a little bit um because we're just uh, dave's there okay. so and uh, I, I can start um running the zoom next week i got a new laptop today but i didn't have awesome. time to set it up yet so i could start next week with that work well it's one of the things me, we're discussing we're, that. Is that we, I, I am Maybe. going to unless uh, unless there's strong objection from everybody from people here i am going to switch it to okay. online next hey, week yeah um See, now that looks better. Now I look like a Muslim. <laughs> oh, I, I like big yarmulkes. Okay. Um, so, well, whoever said that they were going to run Zoom, please shoot an email over either to me or to the office. And that was so Devin. Did you the log in? Yeah, I just, I, I won't be able to do it tonight. I just got a new laptop. I couldn't get it set up, but I could start next week if that's Wait, any, you could you man. Commit, I'll definitely turn things over to you. You okay. could commit to being available at home every Tuesday. Yes. At this time, and then Dave, there, it's not that it's hard. It's just that you have to pretend to be Dave. There's a <laughs> log on. There's a log on to the system that is geared to the synagogue. Um, I don't have a good mustache like Dave. <laughs> okay. There you go. Well, and, uh, let me tell you. In a few years, the colors of yours might change. So yeah, really. Because right. <laughs> my well, started I said out good, as your gray. I said yeah. good, not gray. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, so I, I could start running it for sure next week. Um, I just didn't have time to set up my laptop today. Well, hey, I appreciate it. Like I said, just shoot an email so I can send you the login information. Will do. We can communicate, get you set up. And all that. In fact, we'll, we'll set up a, a test one ahead of time because okay. it's going to require Zoom I got, wants to make sure I got, that you're recognized and you know, there's some security stuff. Bed. We'll take care of that ahead of time. I, okay. I have them for you. Sounds good. Or badges. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Roy, uh, we're going to, um, one of the things I had planned to do today anyway, is a little more, uh, looking ahead about, uh, the process of, if that's what people want of the process of converting. Oh, that's Zach. Z is Zach. Zach, why don't you open your camera up if you don't mind. Okay. Zach is, um, uh, yeah, Zach lives in Evergreen and is um the husband of um gosh, I'm sorry, I'm I'm not I'm not uh I'm not dementia dementia. <laughs> Don't think that, that was gonna Justin, be <laughs> Justin. Justin is the president of was the president, past president of Evergreen Synagogue. And uh so um tonight, Zach, did you get all email for me, Zachary? Yes. Zach? Okay, yes. good. All right. All right. So as I said, we're going to switch next week to totally online, and I'm going to wait a few more minutes. It's still only five minutes to seven. Um, yes, yeah, seven o'clock. Yeah. yeah, I sent these out, but you can have all of these in hard copy. And this, I did forward was, all the stuff you sent out, Rabbi, to to Roy. So he's got that email. Oh, oh, thank you. Okay, uh, and send me his email too. Um, this is this is called Teach to the Test. I don't like to do it, but it is it's the answers to the previous class I taught. Um, so we can go over that. But particularly, did you see my last email? Uh, just briefly. We okay. All right. Points. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, let me just speak. To, uh, just just ignore us for a minute. Let me speak to you guys. <laughs> Let's just I was talking about with. Uh, uh, I'm paying no attention to the rabbi now. No, no, no. <laughs> Let's let set up. Because we have time, but I, I asked for the date of November, was it 21st? 21st. 21st, down in Denver for the two of you. Um, and as far as they're concerned, you send them uh, some you answer, you, not an essay, but you, an essay about yourselves, two separate ones. How did you grow up? What did you, why, why do you want to be Jewish? Um Tell us about your journey so that they know you when you meet them, the two other rabbis. It'll probably be Rabbi Joshua and uh, possibly Karen Aviv. And they're very cool. Usually it's at least one man, one woman. Joshua, Josh is the um, is the uh, president of the uh, Rocky Mountain Rabbis and Canners Association. But he becomes, for that moment, he becomes... The of the din. I'm giving it too much detail. I'm gonna explain this when we meet. We're gonna talk on the phone. As soon as the last person comes in, we'll lock the door again because we have no security. 
Um, but anyway, let's pick a time soon enough next week, this coming weekend, when we can three of us talk for online. We don't have to do it in person. Um, if you want to come to my house or I come to your house, that's nice too. But we can do it, um, you know, on on the tube. And in that process, I will, you know, because it's very soon. I mean, it's a few weeks away, but I want you to feel comfortable. Um, I think you feel, you, you think, or he thinks you know more than he does. He thinks he still doesn't know enough. Um, but the the questionnaire that they ask, which I sent you, I sent you my version and their version. It's almost the same, except mine asks for a little more biographical background. So you write some, it's it, it, very personal. You And I sent you some samples. I sent you Josh from the guy from Australia. I sent you, not from me, but a, a good friend of mine, a, the father of one of my, it's a terrible story, but one of my, um, one of my inmates back in California, um, they raised her as Jewish, but dad never converted. So she's still in prison and dad and mom are raising their, her son. And it's a beautiful story in a way because he converted and a brilliant guy, um, a retired veterinarian. So he had, I sent you his essay. I also sent you an essay by a woman that I met in Denver. It wasn't one of my uh, uh, clients, one of my um, wasn't from my synagogue. I was so impressed by what she and her husband wrote, or at least hers. I don't know if I have hers. So uh, you're not going to crib, but these are what people write. You know, this is this is my life journey. This is what, and then the questions they ask. I'll, I'll go over it when we. You know, what do you do for Shabbat? What do you do about Kashrut? Uh, what is your favorite holiday and why? What do you do? And so that's just a that's by the time you come to the bait in, like I've said before, is I've already approved you. But what I need to do is send you guys some kind of, I already have it, but a uh, knowledge questionnaire. And that's what this is. you know. Uh, and whatever you don't know, you'll learn. Hey, Rick. All right. All right the um, Rabbi, at 7 o'clock, I'm going to go and turn my camera off. Okay. But I'll be here in the background. Learning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Taylor, did you overhear some of what I was saying to to Jamie? Okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, but they they asked for they've been with me for a while, and it came in last year, midway through the class. Um, go and get the the tabuli out of my, um, hmm? get the tabuli out of my lunch pail there if you wouldn't mind. All right. Well, well, I'll I'll start in a minute. Um, anyway, uh, so Devin and Jamie have asked for a date soon. Or not, but you know, before December. So we're going to go down to Denver. Okay. Um, Do you have to go to Denver to no. complete the conversion? Oh, okay. No, this is okay to record. Oh, I, it's that that that's one of the things I'm going to discuss with everybody tonight a little bit. But okay. it's it, let me put it this way: I think in your case, it might be very good to go to Denver because of the kids. On the other hand, it's a long trip. You know, is it, I, I get, you know what? We have to talk because you have you and three kids. I mean, you're going to, you're going to dunk your daughter too. How old is she? Two. Okay. And the boys are under age 13. None of them have to know more than they know. I mean, they just they say, yes, I want to be Jewish, mommy. You know, because are they excited? Yes, they've already said that they love. Did it. I scare? Did I scare? What was the the one who I, I took the Lou Love and Etro with? Oh, Derek! No, he's just really shy. Shy, but I, I was holding it. I was holding it, and then he ran away. Okay. Right. He what told me he thought it was cool after. I was like, Oh, he did. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. He okay. Had, he was the one who said he wants to live in a synagogue after we left. Live in a synagogue. Okay. Well, this is not the last time we'll meet in person, but uh, it's still good. It's uh, very um, uh, juicy, um, and it's got um, uh, the parsley that we put in on Sunday. Help yourselves. Thank you. Yeah, no, I was hoping that people would be, be hungry. Um, and good, good, okay. So so we got bowls there. We have spoons. Let me put these in my office. Or I actually just go put it in the car. Um, so maybe, uh, 
I know your wife's quite a good cook. Did you try that that salad on her? I wonder if anyone actually liked her. They thought it was burger. Okay. <laughs> today's agenda. To, to, yeah. Today's agenda is um, Did you all get the message to try to bring um, uh, dummies? Or you did not? Yep. Okay. I have my one copy. You got in the car, Rick? Oh, good. Thank you. Bring, bring, uh, uh, Tolushkin too, if you can. Okay. Yeah, I didn't mean to. Huh? I am idiots too. The idiots are good too. We can be both. All right. Um, for we have two new people tonight. So, and, and we want to, you know, it's, it's smaller than in the past, but still quite large, you know, it's like, you know, 10 people depending. So, um, one of the things that um, I've decided, partly because of weather, partly because of uh, everybody's schedules, is beginning next week, we'll do this online. Um, and that means that um, Zach from Evergreen can do it. It has to be at home. Um, Roy, I'd like to meet you if you want to come to the synagogue another time. That'd be great. Um, but some of the other reasons are that a lot of the material that I have is online is is things that or it takes a lot to print. Look how much all this printing costs. So um, you can have it and you'll have it at home as well. Um, so some of it's mine. Some of it is from the uh, Denver uh, Intro to Judaism program. Um, and some of it's quite well organized. Let me shut off Mr. Phone. In fact, I'm going to shut it off entirely. Actually, no, let me go leave it at my office. That's even better. Well, I'll shut it off too. <clears throat> All right, so we're waiting for Wolf to come back from his car. But did he, he didn't bring the dog today? Oh, where is he? He ran out with him. Oh, okay. Um, get water if you like. There's water in the fridge. There's water in the kitchen. Take tabbouleh. Take as much as you want. Take it home. That's my last uh, bowl. But I have. I put. I was smart. I decided to put some in the freezer. So because it won't last. Any time. Okay, Roy. Would you like to introduce yourself to the people online and here in person? Or do you want to just yeah. hang out and be anonymous? I'm I'm Roy Barnes, and I've lived in uh, Cheyenne well since 1983. And um, I've uh, I guess I've always been a spiritual seeker. I basically was raised and 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 uh, was raised more in the Protestant evangelical fundamentalist faith, and I still get many things from that. But I also realized just how important that Judaism is too, uh, as you know, in, in the principles that one can learn from your spirituality can be there too. And, um, and so I've always had kind of an interest or I, in, you know, you can't get away from it that Judaism does affect, you know, the culture, the, the teachings still have an influence on yes. still, still hit, and um, so I, I've heard about this class, and I, I and everything, and and they said, oh, you can try one out and see how what it's like. And I finally had a chance today to do it, and awesome. so that's why I did it. Cool. Um, it it is, and and I noticed that you you said your background. Are you? This is not a trick question, and it's not a there's no right answer. Are you interested to the point? of wanting to come be a part of the community 
Or that could be true too. I even know somebody at 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 my job that that goes to oh. Mount Sinai. Who's Stuart. That? Stuart. Oh Stuart. yeah. Uh, Stu uh, Wolf, yeah, huh? Yeah, and uh, I even talk to him sometimes about okay. things like uh, uh, I might bring up something. Oh, you just had a holiday, Yom Kippur is tonight, or okay. Or this. So there's always you can't get away from the culture. And one thing I just want to say is, oftentimes because of what's going on in in, in the Middle East, I think sometimes people confuse the Judaism faith sometimes with what the political government does. And sometimes this is the ignorance of people, uh, yeah, how yeah. they confuse it. There are yeah. two different things. And I think that people will often try to link what they do, but that still has nothing to do with the people who are in the faith mm -hmm. and who are communities and involved. And, and, and so, the, but so I always find a lot of the aspects of Judaism Interesting, just from the standpoint that even being raised in the Christian church, you can't get away from it. It's so intermingled. Yeah. Are you still are you still involved on a church right now? Not really. I'm not. I, I'm not. I, you know, I, 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 it seems like I, in the churches I've gone to, I've never really, <laughs> I guess I never seemed to fit in for very long in the last uh, few okay. years. Yeah. And, um, and stuff, but you know, you guys have always been here. I mean, I've been aware of Mount Sinai for a long time, but you know, you're always it's kind of always been in the background and and stuff. And I get your newsletter and just oh, that's very cool. Anything, but right. I'm more of I'm open to always learning more about a spiritual growth and however it comes. And, yeah, but it's also good I, 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 that you have a community of people that you know and. And, and 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 stuff like that but um so that's kind of cool. where i'm at i'm right. not like i i don't think that one way is the right way people can have in their spiritual journey oh, but at this point in your life i'm trying to just yeah 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 it's something that life, i've come across to, to 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 listen and to hear yeah, about. yeah but my question is at this point in your life is jesus and the idea of jesus being um divine still an essential part of your religiosity or you just kind of a god i think that the way the christian church generally teaches it uh is probably not so much i don't really worship a question to ask but okay yeah yeah i don't really like worship uh jesus or or or, or, or all that but i also think that the teachings there's a lot of very good value in it and and there's a lot of symbolism and that can apply which is some to some extent based on the earlier stratum of right Judaism. yeah well, i would not but if i were but if i were like oh yes uh you know jesus is the only way and you have to accept him or else if you don't you're going to go to hell then i wouldn't be here would i <laughs> so. uh, no well no because we do have people who come to the synagogue who are christian or our supporters. Now, um, by the way, for all of you and for you guys online too, um, and I think you would be fine. I'll ask Sunday, November 3rd, that would be, what is that, two weeks? Yeah. Uh, Sunday, November 3rd, I'm speaking in a, in a class, older groups, everybody, but at 9 30 at United Methodist Church on 18th down, down the street. Um, and they, the topic they want me to talk about is um, Jesus the Jew, you know, the the milieu, the, the environment, the time. Please eat. Rick, you want some? Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and you can take the whole, the whole rest of that home if you like. And that'll be instead of the chart. But you've got to eat it within the dues. Yeah, it is good, especially after sitting in my fridge for a while. Soaks. But, but uh, you have to eat it within two days, I think. Um, anyway, Zachary, Zach, what do you like to be called? Zach. Zach's, Zach's all the way ah. from Evergreen. Um, and uh, I could tell you, I could tell some of the story, but I just say he's, um, you know, I don't think we'll, we may meet in person, like I met Justin in person. Um, don't tell Justin, I couldn't remember his name for a minute. It's just, I was <laughs> focusing on everything else. All right. Uh, how old are you? What do you do? Aren't you in the nursing field too? Uh, I'm not. Um, right now, my mother and mother-in-law live with my husband and I, and they both 
I didn't know that. Wow. In some way, almost died within the past six months. So we moved them in with us to better keep an eye on them. So I'm taking care of them. Like one, uh, one mother-in-law is getting through back surgery. Another mom is going to have surgery here soon. So you have two mother. I'm, I'm all about the plants. Like I studied horticulture, so nothing medical. Rabbi, okay. I need to interrupt for a second. Apparently, there's some people at the front door trying to get in to the synagogue. Rick went. Rick is going. Okay, thanks. Probably, uh, that's probably either Debbie or Josh. I don't know. Uh, anyway, Zach, what what is your interest in this? Because you, you talked to me and you said you don't know, you know, whether it's joining the tribe, which is there's no agenda on that. Yeah. Um, um, so my husband's Jewish. I've been part of uh, congregation Beth Evergreen for a few years, but we moved to a different synagogue. Um, and while I feel included in the community, I don't. Wait, I'm sorry to interrupt. But you've left Beth Evergreen. Yes. Damn. <laughs> I used to talk with Justin all the time. Who was president of the Well, I'm sure you then understand probably why we left. I don't know. I don't want to talk to him about it. But no, he he texted uh, me. He asked me if he wants to class. Okay, but you live uh, here. I guess whatever. Or Conifer, the next town over, but yeah, same area. Um, but I've always been a part of the community, but don't really know any more than what my husband tells me or what friends say. Last ones. Um, if I want, like, I didn't know really how the state of Israel was even formed until a few years ago. Um, so I'm just looking for a way to feel more included in the community, but whether conversion is part of that i'm not really sure because i i still don't believe in any kind of divine being yep. um so that's it's more just to get a a closer understanding of the community i that i'm now a, a part of i'd say closer if you want all right um uh, yeah I, everybody's so diverse in this group um and uh um, uh, with uh, with due respect to to Zach and um, and to uh, I'm going to go ahead, but let me at least go around the room so you guys on at home. This is another reason why the we, I was telling everybody I am going to switch over entirely to uh, a computer next week for all of you. But we will have a couple of meet. We'll have several meetings in person, especially I haven't figured out Hanukkah yet. Because Hanukkah comes, guess what night Hanukkah starts on this year? Christmas Eve, isn't it? Christmas Eve, yeah, very late. Uh, and that has to do with what we're going to discuss today, the, the Jewish calendar. Oh, um, uh, Jamie, will you go and get some some of the calendars out of the big box? The, uh, right there, there, see that big box? It's by the, by the cabinet. You can't miss it. As you're walking towards that door, and we can all, everybody who's here can look at it, those of you at home, might have to look at something else or get your, your uh, uh, phones. Um, see them? Calendar. Yeah, the calendars. They're huh? They're also in the front. But so I assume all of you took one. Topics for tonight: number one. Although I want it to be number one, I'm going to make it number two. Um, number one is going to be uh, Jewish calendar, an overview of the holidays. Um, even though Zach, you know, we're not even going to discuss God. I, and you missed a few classes where I get into the whole question of, are we a religion, a culture, an ethnicity, a nationality? We remember some of that. Um, and we'll be coming back to that. Um, and in a few weeks, uh, probably either next week or the week after, we will start some history. Some of that's going to be in videos that you'll have to watch. Um, but I want to get deeper into the holidays, especially the fall holidays that we've just been in. Um, so that's number one, calendar, and especially the, the overview of the holidays in a spiritual pattern. Number two, since I brought them, last chance for this group, anybody who's here, we're going to shake the lulav of an etro. Uh, and even though you don't do it at night, you know, practice. It, it, a little more practice. Um, and tomorrow... Technically, you can still go and sit in the sukkah, but the holiday part, the, the 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 requirement to sit in the sukkah is over on Thursday. Okay, Thursday night, 
we begin the Simchat Torah, and we're going to come here. Are you all going to, going to be able to come? Right here in this in this social hall, right there in the middle of the ring, we will take out all of the Torah. Well, not all. We'll take out two Torahs, dance with them. We'll probably have some other smaller ones um, out as well. So Thursday night. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So, and, and if you've been to with us for uh, some part of Rosh Hashanah or some part of Yom Kippur or you missed one or you got to the other and then you came to oh. again, missed a day, but we only had one day a Sunday together. We oh. last Wednesday, right? We saw the movie on Tuesday and we had, so we had one in the cold sook, um, which we fulfilled the mitzvah. Um, and now, uh, and I'm going to get into this when we do the uh, festival. Um, uh, Zach, is that you talking to the dog? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Um, I know your I know your your family well. Uh, by the way, where's Justin? Is he working tonight? Tell him to say come hop in and say hi. Yeah, he's probably driving home right now. Normally, he gets done at seven. Okay. Um. So, so now, number one is. The festivals and the, the calendar. Number two is love and etrog. Number three, I want to kind of without because it's important for you guys and for you and for all folk here and for these people online, but not in a deep, deep way. I want to talk about the conversion process and all that stuff because it it. it and I wouldn't do it if I did. We have every time I do this class, I have different people. Sometimes I have people in it who are just curious. Christian, um, I want to learn, but I'm not ready to commit. But you, you all have voted with your feet, uh, and I've already told Rick this. You know, and you guys too. As far as I'm concerned, you're already members of the synagogue. You hear that, Dave? <laughs> you know, I mean, I, the board and I have this long discussion going on. Um, but, um, but, but you have questions, I'm sure about how do you do this? How do I fit in? And if we have time today, we will start on Shabbat, but more likely we'll start on that next week. Okay. Um, so to review, does anybody object? Just seriously, I love to eat. We love to see each other. Does anybody object to being at home, uh, drinking your tea? <laughs> having dinner and and doing this online. Okay. But we can all commit to, it's the same commitment from me too. I'm available at this time. And now at least you've all met each other. At least you guys have. You, you probably won't get a chance to meet Zach in person. Um, Roy, I'll say to you and, and uh, to anybody local, Taylor knows this too. Please make an effort whether you're converting or not, or whether you know, uh, you know, or not, but please make an effort to come to as many events as you can. It's the only way. Is and I'm I'm getting getting to the conversion story again. This is not a class like any other class. I hope we we're getting recorded. Yes, this is not a class where I just teach and you take notes. Although you do want to remember things, and that's why tonight I have something special for you. Uh, the, the the test, not a test, for sure. But um, you want to come out of a intro to Judaism class and intro to Judaism class and the journey of six months, a year, knowing enough. And even in Sam's case, you know, or, or if Debbie was here, you know, I, I grew up Jewish, but I don't know that much. So you want to come um, immerse yourself, read the books. In a, next week, I will start sending videos. The video you remember those, okay? Um, I mean, I just say this is available on YouTube. You don't have to buy it. Um, so I'm already launching into that discussion, but <clears throat> it's very important that you see this as, hey, I'm a uh, I'm paying the synagogue, or I'm supporting the rabbi. The rabbi is my spiritual teacher. Um, for you too, again, um, if you have, that's why I give out my cell phone or my private email. If you are sitting at home, now I can't always answer the phone, but if you're saying, oh, gee, Rabbi, we're, th we're thinking you're going down to Denver. 
I want to see, well, where should we go? You know, to the, to, we should go to the Holocaust Museum. Should we go to the kosher deli? By the way, you know what we get to do on your mikvah day? What I typically do is we go and we have the appointment. We we meet with the rabbis. We You immerse in the mikvah, blah, 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 blah. And then we go to Eastside Kosher Deli for lunch or brunch. It, I mean, I know them well, and they're still serving breakfast at like one, maybe. Um, but it's it you get to have meat for those of you who like meat. I don't, but I mean I eat meat sometimes. But you get a, a really nice uh, meal. I sometimes I treat, sometimes you treat me, and sometimes we just go Dutch. But it's it's part of the thing. And I'm not going to get into the question of whether to do it here or there. There's other there's advantages to each to do the the conversion ceremony here or there. Okay, um, let's do the lulav and etrog now. Because it's 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 real and it's um, you, I don't think we need to get a second one. There's there's two there's another set in the uh, refrigerator. Okay, what is this called in Hebrew? Et, etrog, etrog, and you'll see it as esrog is also because the samach the, the the sin I mean talking about because of, no, it's tav excuse me the t becomes an s so. Um, Open up if you want to, to, and I, I have a chart of it. Let's see. We are idiots or, or, yeah, it's, it's on, it's on in both books. But I have them here in person. Where are you? Hmm? Where are dummies? And dummies. 245. Is that right? Is that page 245? Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. Um, 249. Oh, wait a minute. Do I have a different version? Yeah. 249. But... I'm open to this is, and you don't need the book. You got me. Okay. Huh? And you, I also gave you, I sent you the material. This is, is that not it? Okay. Yeah. Chapter 20, the great outdoors, Sukkot. Okay. So we all sat in the sukkah. The two major mitzvot for Sukkot, the two most required mitzvot are to, uh, Quote, dwell in the sukkah. What does dwell mean? Again, don't take our synagogue as the only example. People build a sukkah in their backyard. You saw the movie. You see, the, and not just Orthodox Jews. You know, uh, the Reform Synagogue that I used to be the rabbi of in Long Beach had a um, roving, you know, sukkah of the night. And, and everybody would have, you'd say, I'm going to, you know, the Leibowitz's house. And then tomorrow night, the Leibowitzers are going to the Schwartz's house or um, the McCarthy's because the McCar McCarthy's were Jewish, too. And uh, it's really fun because it's in, you're going to somebody's house. You're sitting in their backyard and the weather can be great or not. Um, kids love building a sukkah, Taylor. Kids love and you can do go online and you will see for next year. If you wanted to, you could buy a sukkah kit. They're made out of metal, and then the schach, uh, that's the covering, can be, like I said before, it can be palms or um, uh, cor uh, corn stalks. And the easiest thing is what I did, the, those little reeds. Okay, so the second mitzvah is waving the lulav in the trog. Okay, commonly when you say, I'm going to wave the lulav, that means the whole set. It's, that's not too confusing. So, um, uh, Rick, raise it up. Okay. Point to the branch, the species, the type of branch called lulav. Anybody? That's it. Palm. Okay. Palm. And this was from last week. It was in a material that was in my uh, booklet and the thing I handed out. Palm comes from the, generally from the desert areas in Israel or the Middle East. I could say south. 
or but I don't have to. But just say it's from the desert. Okay, point to the um, uh, that's lulav. So everybody should remember say lulav. lulav. It's called lulav, but because it's the biggest thing, they often uh, call this is the lulav. This is the etrog. Um, okay. Um, the second piece that's oh. there is the oh. myrtle. Okay, point to the myrtle. That's the one with the little leaves. Myrtle. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, Rick will come over here. <clears throat> and I know Zach has seen this. Okay. Is that, oh, you know what I have her on. I'm going to switch it over. Uh, I have this thing set up to be speaker. So uh, for some reason, uh, Taylor, I just like looking at you. <laughs> We're... <laughs> You were on the screen. Okay, so now I'm... All right, can we... I'm, I'm still... Okay, for some reason. I'll just do a gallery. Okay, so Myrtle uh, is has a Hebrew name, Hadas. Let's see that, Hadas, or Hadassah, which is really cool because when we get to Purim, we will find out that Esther's Hebrew name was Hadassah. You know, so Hadassah is a Myrtle... Myrtle is a symbolic tree in the Middle East, and it sometimes is synonymous with Zion, Israel. But um, so the myrtle is, or the Hadas, is kind of associated with um, places that are near the, the mountains and the rivers, okay, the, the green areas. Then we have willow, all right? And mine, by the way, this one, it looks like this is the one I grabbed from home. They're all, this, they're all in a bamboo um holder and it's stuck together that's good because they won't fall apart the willow or its hebrew name is araba araba say it araba araba is obviously kind of the rivers but the drier areas so it's tropical kind of so as you may remember there are three uh the th these three plants symbolize body parts that's among other things. But first, let's review the so desert, mountains, rivers, and then the etrog. The etrog, or the citron, as I explained on Sunday, is, the, and this is being recorded too, uh, it, etrog is sui generis. There ain't nothing like it. It looks like a lemon, smells like a lime. It's sweet. You can, they saw the movie, you can eat it after Sukkot is over. I could cut this up, and it's a really cool thing to do. I uh, I have two, so maybe I'll do that. Maybe in two weeks, you can cut it up and make it into sugar candy. You know, like you cut little pieces, put it in, uh, and and it's great. It's just serve the kids. But as far as the holiday is concerned, during those eight days, all these have to be kept secure. That's why I put this back in the box. My um, actually. Uh, Jamie, why don't you, or no, Jamie, um, Rick, you know, we're at the bottom of the refrigerator. Go get the other set because it's in the bottom of the big fridge because it's better. My, mine, I let this sit out for half an hour. And look what happened. Myrtle. And this is Myrtle. You know, it's really quick. So they'll say, when you get a set, put the Myrtle inside of the, of the uh, uh, dasa. Put it inside of uh, paper towels. Keep it cold in the refrigerator. The willow, on the other hand, they want it to okay. And that yet tomorrow, it's a really cool wealthy pagan. They take the they they bless the land with the willow and they beat the willow on the ground and uh, to wish for water. So it's very, very old. Okay. Yeah. You didn't have to bring the box, but okay. So let's go. Um we'll turn the camera around. Oh, no, well, let's all stand here. Let's all stand over here. We'll just do it real quick one time. Um, so so um, it, you didn't get the etrog. It's in the box. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, hey, Sam, you take this set. So check. I think it doesn't matter right or left-handed. You hold the, um, the lulav in the right hand. But maybe I'm wrong. I mean, if, you want, if you're left-handed, you want to switch it, that's okay. But remember what I said to the kids. I said it to Taylor's kid too. Um, the switch, the the laser um, or the what is it called? The 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 lightsaber <laughs> <laughs> is turned 
one by having the pitam, that's this little flower remnant, up. So this is on, this is off. Now, you're not going to be tested on this, but if you do Sukkot for several years in a row, it'll become kind of second nature. As I said on Sunday, I don't like to use words like pagan or something, but it really is the most earthy holiday we have. When I do this with Native Americans, they say, oh, that's totally our culture or, or Wiccans, you know, because we're facing east. Which way would be east? Yeah, uh, this, oh, no, th this is it. This is east. Well, it's kind of a big corner. So we face east and we bring together the, if you want to do body parts, may I, may I stand up straight and be proud? May I have a uh, good vision, the eyes, the Hadassah's eyes. May I say only good things, and may I have a good heart, right? Or if you remember the film, Fertility. It's all about fertility, too. Um, so this could be the heart or the uterus, um, depending on how, how you want to look at it. So that's the body parts. Then you're also uniting the four corners of the world. And then another system or another series of meanings, which right now okay say the blessing uh, together if you even you don't have it in front of you baruch always every blessing this is important every blessing a mitzvah a, ta, a thing i'm putting a mezuzah on i'm lighting the candles i'm putting on tefillin it's all anything related to a commandment and i put that in quotes you know the rabbis interpreted it as a commandment all those have the 11 words, Asher uh, Kiddushanu B'Mitzvotah. You'll hear it so many times. You'll say, oh, that's the, what are we doing? We're lighting the candles. The six words that are also in every blessing is, um, I bless you, the Lord, my God, rule of the universe. I don't use Lord, but um, so together, Baruch. You want to do it? Repeat it for you. Okay, we'll do a repeat. Ata, Adonai. Adonai. Melech. I can mute myself. <laughs> well, no, no, it's fine because we hear you, but it's uh, Haolam. Ash. Shanu. The Mitzvotav. The Mitzvotav. The Tzivanu. And here's the last few words Al. Al. Lulav. Upon the shaking. The, the taking up of the lulav. Now, then you. Now, I should have done this, but that's my part. You like to say ahead of time, "I am dedicating this to X." The traditional dedication or kavana is rain in Israel at its due time. That's traditional. The more new age would be wherever there needs to be rain, let there be rain. Wherever there's too much rain, you know, uh, climate. To, uh, balance, right? I like to add, you know, dedicate it to a place. Don't dedicate it to yourself. Oh, Lord, won't you buy me a color TV? Nobody remembers Jan Janice Stoplin. But anyway, it's, it's a, not a selfish wish. In the prison, I, the women would say, I'm dead. And we were right there. In, uh, the prison was right on native land. So we would say, you know, balance for all of this area. Okay. But I, I, so I'm, I'm ready to do it. I turn it on, beep, and then you go. Remember, as I said, you go east and in, and then south. Is that uh, no north and in, and west and in, and south and in, and Father Sky, Mother Earth. Okay, and I, I didn't skip that. I learned it this way because I learned it from Hasidim. You don't have to put it back in your belly button. But I like to do that. In fact, I even do it three times. One, two, three. Like, wow. I went in my backyard and I did it today. Okay, so let's all do that once. Go ahead. <clears throat> take the you take this one and you go, okay, pass it on. Okay. When you hand it off to somebody, do you like turn it back on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, it's very logical. You would do okay. that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And, and there was you're showing them. Yeah. Okay. 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 So say the blessing. Oh, well, let's say we did the blessing for all of us. Okay. But say, make an intention. Okay. All right. So the east. Or if you just say forward, left, 
over your shoulder, over your head, right. I'm sorry, we got lost four, four directions, six directions, sky, earth. Okay, Sam, Sam uh, Emily didn't yet, okay. <laughs> and on, um, yeah, on uh, that page in, I'm sorry, letter, yeah, the facing east, I should ask, ask mention that by the way, why do we face east for so many things in Judaism? Um, that where Jerusalem is. That's right. That's right. What facing towards, you know, it became customary after the exile uh, by the Romans to um, to face east. I mean, if they were in, um, yeah, put that one back. Yeah. Oh, although tomorrow it, it will be okay, okay for it to be, um, you know, yeah, it's already it's already uh, it's already uh, too old. Um, but I'm going to take both of the uh, etchings home with me and make, uh, if you like me to, I will make candy out of them. Oh, another fun thing you can do with the etro before I f finish uh, is take, and you can do this with oranges too. Maybe you've done it. Take cloves, put a bunch of cloves all around it, and then it becomes a spice box or for Havdalah or generally for something for spicing up your house. Oranges too, yeah. So pass, pass around. Now, if this were beginning of the holiday, I would say be very, very careful. Um, but in general, don't. This is where it comes out the stem. This, as I said the other day, is it's as if it's the flower, but there's no flower left. Isn't that cool? That's probably why they grabbed it because they said this is so spiritual a fruit. And as I said the other day too, I'm glad we're being recorded. We don't know, obviously, it's a, it's a story, but they believe this was the tree in the Garden of Eden, the tree of life. Um, uh, it says, take, so the, the mitzvah says, and it's on page, yeah, it's on page 248 in, um, in uh, oh, where are you in dummies? So, I mean, in uh, in idiots. I don't have to stop saying idiots. Let's see, Blechen, Blechen and uh, Falcon. Okay, Falcon. I have 248. What do you have for Blech on Sukkot? Huh? Does he? Also, I sent you all that is in my, uh, I will make sure that I have it again. Uh, um, send, send, I'll send you the supplement from last week. Let's oh, see. Lulav Sukkot 170 is what I have in Blech. Does he have a chart too? All right. Mm -hmm. I got the chapter. Yeah, there's different editions too. Um, okay. Uh, on uh, two, 170 in Lech, he points out this is what this is what I like. I said number one is four different areas of climates in in the Middle East. Number two, um, body parts: spine, eyes, ear, heart, uh, um, and then. But this is also very cool. Um, the more famous, you want to read that, Sam? The bottom of um, where are are you? The same page with me? Uh, it's called Four Kinds of Jews. Wherever it says Four Kinds of Jews. Yep. Okay. Uh, um, yes, so uh, some say the lulav stands for the spine, the myrtle, the eyes, the willow, the lips, the etro, the heart, and these four species Jews express their willingness to worship God. And that's Blech. I'm not saying Blech. Blech is, is an Orthodox rabbi. Falcon is Reformed. But make your own interpretation. I want to. I want to have a good spine. Look, Rick, this is for you. Lulav. <laughs> okay, right. Um, but read the bottom one. More famous interpretation. The more famous interpretation sees these four plants as symbols of four different types of Jews. The etrog has both taste and fragrance. It stands for Jews who possess learning as well as good deeds. So learning is, um, let's see, is taste and fragrance is good deeds. So what does it mean? 
I'm smart, but I don't go and help. The other one goes, helping people, but I'm not so not learned. I'm not so much about um, the Torah learning, right? If you're a Torah scholar and you're not doing good deeds, well, it goes on. Palm tree. The palm tree only has peace, but no fragrance. Meaning the, the date, the mm -hmm. actual date that comes off the tree. Yeah, it, it represents Jews who have learning alone, but are de devoid of good deeds. Okay. The myrtle has fragrance, but not taste, just like Jews who possess good deeds, but no learning. Mm -hmm. The willow, the least of all these, has neither taste nor fragrance. It represents Jews who are not learned or have no good deeds to their credit. Remember, he said that's traditional. I don't say only Jews, but any kind of person, you know. So the, the world needs every kind of person to, to, to go around by diversity. Um, and then below there, he writes the remarkable idea. Go ahead. The remarkable idea of this ritual expresses is that all four have to be brought together to be blessed. Mm. None of them should be shunned. No Jew should be dismissed as unnecessary or expendable. And I'm going to say no person. Yeah. The three that are imperfect, the lulav, willow, and myrtle, are drawn close to the etrog, just as Jews who are imperfect should be brought near those who can serve as inspiration. Uh -huh. Altogether, the four symbolic of a unified Jewry are then waved to all four directions of the world to show that it is the Jewish mission to be a light unto the nations. Bringing its wisdom to right. all humankind. Okay, so this is um, from th this book, um, the uh, complete idiot's guide. Now it's turning out that I, I guess, even though I said it was optional, since I had extra copies, some of you found it easily online. We'll just say we'll use both books. But um, I, uh, if I only had one, I would get Falcon. Um, because it's just easier to find stuff. He says something interesting. Um, he he has on uh, page 250, he says, uh, while some teachers note that this ritual is a reminder that God is everywhere, it also honors the unique energies that each direction symbolizes. You know, when you wave at six directions. And I, I I've, this is very, this is going to sound exactly like Native Americans. The land of the rising sun, east. The direction of clarity, north. Um, the setting sun, west. Warmth, emotions, and growth, south. Up, sky, uh, dreams and visions, and down, the connection to the earth. So just read on this. You find all kinds of stuff online. Uh, I may be able to send you a poem by a colleague of mine. Okay, so now let's look at Hmm. Yeah, they grab the calendar. I just want to do this really cool thing. Um, we're going to look at the calendar in detail. Um, <clears throat> but remember, I've said this before, and you will continue to come across this. Grab me one too, Sam. Uh, you'll continue to come across this throughout the, the Jewish year. And I'm, I'm beginning to talk about Jewish time, Jewish awareness of time. Even well, for you, Zach, even not so believing people love the rhythm of the Jewish calendars. Um, people in Israel, um, uh, Jewish community centers and, and schools and things like that. And in the back, uh, no, don't look yet, but in the back of, um, uh, of um, yeah, in the back of Falcon, he has, I believe, he has um, an appendix. One of his appendices is the Jewish calendar. Yeah, three seventy one to three seventy two, which we'll look at in a minute. But first, I want to hear. I want you to hear my my spiel, my rap. Okay, little little moon, mini moon. Right. Remember, we are lunar people. We're loony. So, why did the Jewish calendar? And the Arabic calendar, by the way, also depend on the cycles of the moon instead of the cycles of the sun. Doesn't it make more sense? You know, a year is a, well, they didn't have uh, until much later, they were aware of the change in the seasons. But I think the Aztecs and other peoples who had measuring devices could measure 365 days. Sure, they knew there were changes of the seasons, but something you could really look at and see 
clearly was 29 days. So um, the lunar cycle was very, and this is not another with theology, we didn't worship the moon, but we looked at the moon, we were tuned into the moon as a sign of the change in the times. Um, actually, we'll look at Appendix C in the back in a minute. So, but I want you to get this spiritual rhythm. I am reborn. I am a new baby. First day of Tishri. The new moon of Tishri is when we celebrate Rosh Hashanah. Rosh, head, right? Beginning of the year. So what have I done? I mean, yes, I know I'm uh, 60 or 20 or 20, 45, whatever, but I'm spiritually born again. And I don't like to use that phrase, but, you know, we get another chance, like I talk about um, the, the film Groundhog Day. So on the new month, the new moon, we are a baby. And by the way, this is not only on Tishri, but every month, astrologers will tell you, um, if you have to do something, start it during the first seven days of the, of the lunar month. That's why, and, and you are into astrology, or you were, you are. So, um, uh, in the beginning of the year back then, and in astrology, was, um, um, what's the first month? Oh, the first sign. Um, that's what happens when your brain gets old. Uh, the first sign is uh, Aries. Okay, so, uh, but I want to—I don't want to get uh, distracted. So Aries or Nisan is the first month, and then the seventh month in the Bible language was Tishri in the fall. But now, after the Babylonian exile, we started counting from Rosh Hashanah. Okay, so here's the rhythm of Tishri, the month of Tishri. New moon, beginning, baby, I get a chance to start all over again. I'm not a baby, but I, I get a short chance to be reborn. Ten days later, moon is growing, moon is growing, moon is growing. Ten days later, it's almost 15 would be full, right? 15 and 29 days. So at a, at a tenth day of the lunar month, Yom Kippur, I'm a young adult. I'm a teenager. I'm a... 15 year old or an 18 year old, I'm mature enough. This is the Yom Kippur list teaching. I'm mature enough to say, I'm sorry, I did something wrong. Please forgive me. Right. So the the Yom Kippur in the in terms of the lunar cycle is growing. So and then you come to 15, and here's the really spiritual. This will be in in uh, Falcon too. Okay. The full moon is a symbol in the. Now we're not pagans; we are Hebrews. But in the in the Middle East, they use the moon to think of it like that's when they would go out and they could stay in the fields until nighttime. Shine on, shine on, harvest moon. What is that? Harvest moon is a full moon. So again, I'm speaking symbolic poetry language. The full moon is pregnant, um, mature complete. I'm I'm ready. So we go from Rosh Hashanah, again, I'm going back, Rosh Hashanah, I'm a, I'm a newborn, I'm a new beginning, I'm a new sprout, to Yom Kippur, I'm maturing, to on Sukkot, we're celebrating the harvest, actual physical harvest, the plants, the gourds, the zucchinis, and so on, uh, the chickens, and also my and your fullness. We're looking at our lives and saying, hey, this is, um, you know, what am I reaping? What am I ready to bless myself with? What am I blessing Mother Earth with? Now we're going into the, uh, so past 15, we get to Simchat Torah, which always falls on, <clears throat> I should we should look at the calendar, um, 27 of the month, um, 25, 20, 20, 23, 24. So 20, 23, so we're towards the end of the month, but we're not saying bye-bye month. It's not like, oh, we're dead. But but Simcha Torah finishes out that cycle by saying, and there's another metaphor. We entered into the sukkah, and I said this on Sunday, what do we do when we get married? We, under, we go under a canopy. So in the sukkah, we're in God's canopy, and so what do you have? 
well, in the, the old days and even certain places today, they don't just have the, the wedding ceremony. For seven days, the bride and the groom get to be celebrated. They get to go to different people's houses. We're going over to grandma's house and everybody, and they'll sing to them and they'll, they'll have a meal in honor of the bride and groom. Um, and by the way, Zach, yes, this could be for gay couples too. But anyway, the idea is that for seven, everything is in sevens in Judaism, right? Seven, you know, eight, seven and eight. Eight is, uh, I'm getting best. My main thing was just the dates, but numbers are also very spiritual. Eight is infinity. You turn eight on its side, it's infinity. So seven plus one. <clears throat> so Sukkot lasts seven days, seven days of a wedding. And what do you do at the end of, or in that time? You're married. So Simcha Torah, Thursday night, we are going to have a wedding. I mean, what do you do at a wedding? You dance with the bride and groom. Well, who's the bride and who's the groom? And that's going to be an interesting gender thing, right? Is the is the Torah the bride and we're the groom? Or uh, are we all the, the collective spouse? You know, I mean, they were very genderized. We don't have to be, you know, but... But we dance with the Torah as if she, and I do use she on purpose, she is the, the queen, the bride. And then we we open it up, and this is a new thing that only began about uh, 30 years ago. Some people do this now. We take out, I'm getting to Simcha Torah. We take out the Torah and we wrap one Torah scroll, if we can, all the way around the room. So this is a custom. What they, but they, what they're supposed to do, I mean, supposed to is, I mean, by tradition, you have to read the end of, of Deuteronomy, the very last portion of Deuteronomy, the very beginning of uh, of Genesis. By the way, I sent that out too. It's just a very quick summary of Simchat Torah. Technically, what happened here? Oh, it? huh? You emailed it? I emailed this as well. It's just a summary of Simchat Torah. Okay. <clears throat> I'll open for questions because I probably talk too much, and I got a drink. Is Joe? that going to be on Thursday? Thursday night, yeah. Huh? Hmm? It's the usual time, seven. We we do everything here at seven. Um, I think we might be having a little children's thing at six thirty. Now, okay. So since we're talking about Simcha Torah, let me give you a little more customs on that. Um, the two most wild or not well, humorous, yes. Purim is humorous. Simcha Torah is, by the way, what's the word simcha mean? What's a simcha? Oh yeah, I had such a simcha. I wanted, I came to your wedding was a simcha. Mm -hmm. I had just uh -huh, a, a, a joyous event. There are several words in Hebrew that mean happy, um, but um, sameach, let's say that together, sameach, sameach. So happy holiday. So Simchat Torah is joy of the Torah. So and Simcha is a boy's name, or it could be a girl's name too. Simcha Joy, right? I think it'd be a great name for you. You or so. I, I've been thinking about this Jamie thing, but you know, we said Jays and Yuds, but Simcha. Now, the only problem is we can't say the ch. Do you remember? Um, I my I am not ADHD. I just. Do you remember? Um, do you remember a uh, taxi on TV? Uh, Andy Kaufman's Carol Kane was his girlfriend, or or whatever from uh, from from uh, it was Latka and Simka, but they couldn't do so. They made it so it was supposed to be Jewish, but they didn't say that. So uh, was, she was Simka and he was Latka. Um, okay, so so what happened is. If we were to read the, the actual Torah, it says, You shall dwell in the Ka for seven days, but I love you so much, stay another day. Don't leave yet. And that became eighth day. So there's a holiday that most of you may not have heard of called Shemini Atzeret. Shemini Atzeret is the eighth day of assembly. And in Israel, this is going to sound confusing. Uh -huh. Israel Sukkot only lasts seven days. So Shemini Atzeret and Simchat Torah are the same day. On the same day. Okay. So with that in mind, let's let's 
let's do two things again. I'm sorry for you guys, but if you have, if you have what's his name, if you have um, Falcon, go to appendix appendix C. I am got it on page three seventy one. But I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, and and use this too. Okay. Um, C appendix C. Yeah, calendar of Jewish holidays. Um, to you, this is this is Falcon, not to not. Uh, Tolushkin is also very, very detailed. Okay, here, you want to borrow mine? Oh, he can look on with you. Okay. Um, uh, all right, Rick, why don't you read? Judaism has long recognized. It may be different. Judaism has long recognized yeah. special nature of time. Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel. Heschel wrote in his book, The Sabbath, Judaism is a religion of time. Aiming at the sanctification of time, Judaism teaches us to be attached to holiness in time, to be attached to sacred events, to learn how to consecrate sanctuaries that Unsecrate. that that emerge from the magnificent stream of a year. Judaism marks and celebrates time in a number of ways: holidays, Sabbath and the weekly readings of a specific portions of the Torah, the rituals of personal life cycles. Yes, and if I wanted to, I could go even deeper and say, what does a Jewish day look like? Because in biblical times, and even today, they have the morning service, which is actually just as the sun is rising. They have the afternoon service, and they have the evening service. So they divided the day into, you know, even then into 12 Units of time. Um, okay. Um, uh, Sam, you want to continue? The Jewish calendar. The Jewish calendar, unlike the civil Gregorian calendar, is based both on the cycles of the moon as well as the sun. The months correspond to cycles of the moon and the years correspond to cycles of the sun. Since a lunar month has about 29 and a half days, Jewish, Jewish months always have either 29 or 30 days. The problem is that 12 lunar months is 11 days short of the 365-day solar year. So it's 356 days uh, of the year. I mean, that would be... So every year, what's going to happen in, in terms of the sun, you're going to end up losing 11 days. And that's why... Well, okay. Uh, you want to continue? Or you don't have this one? Okay. I'm, I favor Falcon. I'll read. In the 4th century... Rabbi Hillel, there's, there was a Rabbi Hillel and his grandson, uh, Hillel II, instituted a mathematical system of rectifying the lunar and solar years, which is still used today. The years are divided, this is going to get sound really esoteric, but they divided into 19-year cycles about every third or fourth year. What they do is they add a whole month leap month, a leap, a leap year. But the leap year means you don't just add like February 29, you add a whole month. So last year, or th this year that we just finished, was a leap year. So we're going to, and we're going to look at the, um, yeah, they're on, uh, there they go. Okay, so um, 12 Hebrew months, <coughs> and I he says, he even says, um, the details of Hill's calculations are mind-bogglingly dense, yes. The 12 Hebrew months are called, let's, oh, you know what? He did it this way, yeah. He did it through the, the biblical way. So let's say Nissan, Nissan. not Datsun or Toyota. ER, ER. Sivan, Sivan. Tammuz, Av, Elul. Elul, and they don't mean anything because they were biblical, Babylonian names. Tishrei, Tishrei. Or Tishri, you'll hear people say. Keshvan, that's a huh. Kislev, I kissed my lev. You know, lev is hard. Tevet, Tevet. Shavat, Shavat, and Adar. Adar. On leap years, Adar is followed by a month called Adar too. Adar Bet. So, and that's what they do is if your birthday, if you were born on Adar too, it's celebrated in Adar on non-leap years. Don't worry, you don't say, oh, I'm only I'm only four years old. You know? Okay. Um, uh, I don't know whether this will help, but um, 
let's see. Um, the next page, or my book is the next page. Uh, way, the way you can do this is you can look at, you can um, to, a, take the uh, Gregorian year and add three three thousand three seven six zero to it, and you'll get to the Hebrew year. Okay, so that's why we're in the year fifty seven eighty five. Now let's turn to the calendar. If you have a Jewish calendar on your own, right? Look at this. But if you don't, this is what I'm telling everybody now. I've said it before. Everything's online nowadays. People look at the Talmud online. They look at. They do prayers online. They can you can do you, you, you got Rick, you got stuff on uh on uh, your phone too, I think. Yeah. Um Elias has a bunch of stuff from Chabad. But huh? What's that? Yeah. Put everything on your phone. But yeah. go to it. There was a website I told you about called Hebrewcalendar.com or Hebcal for short. And Hebcal is really great because and you don't have to do everything they say, but it'll you go to that site and say, Would you like to uh, upload or download, whichever phrase they use, and you can put it on your calendar, whether it's doesn't matter, Mac or IBM, you can put it into your phone, and then it'll say, do you want uh, just the Shabbat? Do you want the Torah portions? Do you want, I think you might be able to put candle lighting time for the area you live. So, but this is hard copy, so let's use this. Okay, so let's go to September. Or so look at it. And this is how to read a, this kind of calendar. So it says on the top of that page, um, the Hebrew says Av Elul. What does that mean? It means two months. September had two months. So let's see if anybody can just put you making it like a Hollywood Squares game or something. Um, Devin, on what day of the calendar? Did the first this year, this this beginning of this year, on um, what year the, the secular calendar was the first of Elul? Now, what you do, I mean, I'm helping him. What you do is you you look to the top date in here is the English date, the calendar. The bottom late, yeah, you got it. The September four, right? Boom. Okay, I'll do a reverse for uh, Emily. What is the Hebrew date on September eighteenth? Gotcha. Okay. Now, by the way, this is Israeli, but just they they do it like they do in Europe, fifteen Elul, the fifteenth of Elul. So, but it doesn't matter. Okay. And uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, are these the the top is the you um, supposed to signify the numbers? So that's the first. Yes. One. That's that's one. Yes. Okay. And we didn't do we didn't do alphabet, but the the if you wanted to look at the bottom of the square, it says on the left side of the square, in this version anyway, it has the uh, Arabic numeral, one, two, three, four, and the right side is the Hebrew, significant for that. So yes, we'll, maybe we'll have a chance to do Hebrew a little bit at least. Aleph is one. Let's try it at least. Aleph, oh. one. Bet, Bet. two. Bimel, yep. three. Dalit, four. And we'll stop at hey. Hey, five. So the hey would be five. Okay. Um, <clears throat> um, and then you look at the bottom and they say, oh, hey, um, they have a little thing about Rosh Chodesh. Every, every Jewish, um, whoever makes these calendars up, comes up with a theme. All right. So this year, and if you looked, at, if you happen to have, I might have them in the office. Last year, um, Rosh Hashanah fell on like about a day after Labor Day, really early. All right, so that's because of this lunar solar thing. It's much in the clock, it's eight ten. I want to be able to get to something else. All right, so um, <clears throat> um, and by the way, you'll notice on this calendar that it always has at the end of the the week, Friday. What does it say? What's this little sign there? Look at Feb February 6, 13, 2027. What does that mean, Jamie? What do you think that means? Yes, light candles. Now, but no, but not only for Shabbat, but now let's go to October. And what do they do? They put on this version, I mean, you'll find it everywhere differently, but in this version, 
uh, yeah, they have so many holidays in October, almost all the holidays, basically every holiday this year fell in October. So, Sam, what's what's on October 2nd? Uh, Erev Rosh Hashanah. Right, right. And now I got to get to that, too. What is Erev? Erev, huh? Eve. It's very easy to remember. Erev is the evening. And I, I didn't do this because I wanted to get to the year, but we'll get back to the day for a minute. Um, and there was evening and there was morning, the first day, right? In the biblical mind, and somewhat still in the Western mind, but we don't think about it, we don't talk about it. When the sun set, that's the end of the day, right? So what they did was they said, and this is literally, it was evening and there was morning the first day. So they counted, they said, that is the first day. It was evening, it was morning the second day. So when does Shabbat begin? When the, or 45 minutes after the sun goes down. Right, so when the sun goes down, 45 minutes, within those 45 minutes, we light Shabbat candles. That's again, tradition. Could you light it afterwards? Yes. Could you light it before? Traditionally, you're supposed to light it. Um, and you'll, that's why you'll see on these calendars, bottom of the page, it'll tell you what time to light the candles. But let's not get to that. So in October, um, let's see. Um, Taylor, do you have one of these at home? I don't. I just pulled up that website on my phone, though. Awesome. Yeah. Um, hey, Justin. Hi. And the puppy, too. Yes. <laughs> uh, good to see you, man. Um, Justin was one of my Hebrew students. Um, and um, by the way, uh, Zach, we'll, let's make an appointment you know, outside of class time to talk about everything, your journey. And you know, we'll just do a Zoom appointment. But uh, let's continue. So in the calendar, um, Oh, I asked Sam a question. Okay, so era of Rosh Hashanah. I remember Rosh Hashanah is two days long in the diaspora. In Israel, it's only one. So we have the era or the evening, eve of, and then we have the day, and then we have the second day. So this year, we flowed through, right, two days of Rosh Hashanah. That night, Friday night, was Shabbat. So what they show you is candles on uh, Erev Rosh Hashanah, you light candles on second night, and you light candles on Shabbat. <clears throat> I'll get to the how you light candles, different story. But um, So then it says, in this particular, look at 11th of October. What was the, the Hebrew date, Emily, the 11th of October? The 9th of Tishrei. And the next day would be the 10th of Tishrei. So if you were asked, when does Russia, when does Yom Kippur fall, you would say 10 Tishri. But everybody knows you mean 9, 10. Okay, you knew this already. You guys have been keeping this stuff for a long time. They've been they've been hanging. Okay, all right. Um, <clears throat> uh, back to this thing about Erev. Um, so as I said, the ancient people, when the sun sets, that's the end of the day. And so that's when... They count time. Shabbat begins at the sunset and ends when? The next night, 45 minutes. And they, they also say, the and they're giving the traditional answer, you must be able to see three stars. Well, I mean, not if it's cloudy, but you, they, they clock, they have on the calendar, it will say what time is, is candle lighting time. And some calendars will say also wherever you look. We'll say, what time is Havdalah? What's Havdalah again? Is it half a dollar? Huh? The end of Shabbat. The, the service that ends Shabbat. We did it here um, at the end of Yom Kippur. Okay. Um, oh, I have a trick question. Justin, answer this question. What's the most important Jewish holiday? Shabbat. <laughs> because people will say, oh, no, Pesach, or, you know, Hanukkah. No, okay. Shabbat is a holiday. Uh -huh holiday. It, it, so that's going back to this Heschel quote. Heschel, what he said was, Judaism did not, this was given 
the way things were in Europe, all these big cities, right? So they build palaces in space. Look at that beautiful church. Look at all those icons, you know. Heschel's idea was he said, we build palaces in time. So I wanted tonight to be about this idea of what is the essence of the Jewish calendar. Um, and, you know, again, you don't have to say, I'm, I must stop all work at 445 on Friday night, on Friday afternoon. But uh, I'm uh, bridging over into the Shabbat question. Shabbat is quintessential um, holiday of, of celebrating time. And then what you do is you get to something else. It's not in, it's, I didn't send it to you, but it will be in all books. Okay, so um, giving you halakhic not necessarily what Reformed Jews do or what I personally do. What are the um, restrictions on Shabbat? What are you not supposed to do on Shabbat? Work, light a fire, spend money, do business, have an argument. You shouldn't have an argument either. And generally speaking, you're not, I mean, again, within the, uh, I, I don't want to say the Orthodox, in the traditional mode, you have cooked your food before Shabbat. You don't have to cook. You're not going to cook on Shabbat. But this is where we get into these really fantastic, we'll do this more next week too, uh, legal, I don't want to say loopholes, but even back in the Middle Ages or you know, Europe, people wanted to have hot food or hot uh, coffee or tea or something on Shabbat. So what did they do? used to have, and I see no people have this, they would keep a little light on the pilot on the on the top of the stove and put a piece of metal over it, and it's called, a, like the guy's name, the rabbi, it's called a blech. So, or, or, and I did this when I was completely uh, traditional, we have today um, uh, urns, coffee urns. So there's the coffee urn, right? Uh, you know, so you could keep the coffee urn on and go over to it. Oh boy, am I cold? I want to get hot tea. I mean, I'm getting into Shabbat too much. Um, so that's how Shabbat is kept. No work, no spending of money, no driving. I mean, that's all these things are and and I, I could get into that discussion. When did people change? 1952, the, the rabbinical the law committee of the political assembly of the conservative movement yeah. by that point people no longer all lived close to the shul right? they moved from the uh, uh, lower east side to the upper west side or something like that or to Jersey and so they said well you may not drive but if you must you can do it as long as you don't spend money so have a full tank of gas. Don't stop at a gas station. Don't go through tolls. <clears throat> so you will see if you were to go to someplace like uh, L.A. or Philly, New York, you will find parking lots with people, you know, uh, where people drive. Even in Orthodox shuls, people know that you're driving to shul. But the rabbi will walk. So um, and I have gotten calls here from people thinking of moving to Cheyenne. And I'll ask what kind of synagogue is this? And I'll say, well, to be honest with you, we're not Orthodox. But if you wanted to move here, you could live at Pers off Pershing and walk. You know who walks here every week? Huh? Not Carol, but... Um, um, Mary. Yeah. Mary and Josh. Josh Mar Mary was married to Joshua. Because they live close enough to walk. And she loves to walk home. Um, not because of Shomer Shabbos, but, uh, but I wanted to just differentiate between Shabbat, okay, so Shabbat, no, no driving, no money, no cooking, but but the cooking thing is solved by keeping something warm. You could keep your oven warm. You could keep the kumkum, the kumkum I'm calling it by Israeli name, the urn, the coffee urn. You could keep hot water going. Um, <clears throat> um, and so what they would do, what I people that I know began to do, we didn't have, they didn't have it in the Middle Ages. We will have um, a crock pot. So you put your stew in the crock pot, and there's a thing uh, 
again, I'm using orthodox terms, but a Yiddish term, cholent. Cholent is uh, um, potatoes and meat and vegetables all sitting in the crock pot. So when I was in my traditional phase, I would have a crock pot. And so now let's look at um, what do you say on Shabbat to each other? What's the greeting? Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Or if you're Ashkenazi Yiddish, what would you say? Justin? Oh, sorry. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Okay, good. But let's go with Shabbat Shalom because it's more Israeli, American, and normative. Okay. Well, what is a holiday and what is a holy day? And this is in all the reading, but I want to just lay it out here. Bible holidays that were instituted that are in the Torah, not the later books like, like Maccabees. The three major festivals, plus Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the three major festivals that we celebrate that are called the pilgrimage festivals, right, are the three are in order that we see, that we think of them as Sukkot, fall equinox, um, Pesach, spring equinox, and Shavuot at the end of the year, um, let's call it early summer. Technically, the way they're laid on the Bible is, in the Torah, is Pesach first, because it was the springtime, Aries again, and then Sukkot, and then Shavuot. So those are called, let's get this term down, Yom Tov. Let's say Yom, Yom Tov. Or So that's where the term, and again, I'm doing too much at once. Yom Tov means a holy day. A holy day, or a holiday, but a, a holy day is a day on which many of the same, um, and I want to say restrictions, but I'd rather say many of the same mitzvot that are on Shabbat are done on a Yom Tov. For example, remember we were in the sukkah and we did a Kiddush. If, 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 if any holiday, any any holy day begins the same way Shabbat begins, lighting candles, doing the uh, Kiddush, and then doing the Motsi. Always, those three in that order. Lighting the candles, doing the blessing on the, and the, and the Kiddush, by the way, and you all know this, I'm sure. The, the blessing on the wine, this is why it's different from Christianity, right? We're not celebrating the Christ, the, 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 the we're not making the wine holy. We're not, it's not like, oh, this is holy wine. Now, it, it, we are saying this is a holy day. Let's celebrate it with wine. You can do Kiddush on water, on milk, on vodka, <laughs> on anything you got, orange juice, if you don't have, but it's supposed to be wine because wine is a symbol of joy. Um, so we light the candles. That's why on each of those days, every time if you look at that calendar, every day there there's a Yom Tov, such as uh, Hoshana Rabbah tomorrow night, or Shemini um, Atzeret. And then let's look at December. December still has only the four, even though you're supposed to light a candle, it says, uh, December 25th, which just happens to be a somebody else's holiday, December 25th is the first night of Hanukkah. It says, light one candle in the evening, but it notice that it doesn't have the two little candles there. So, you, so and now I'm going to get to the difference between Hanukkah and, and the other days. But if you go to, <clears throat> I'd have to go all the way to April. Of 2025. All right. Uh, who didn't get a, a, a question yet? Rick, uh, looking at that calendar, when in, in 2025 does uh, first night of Pesach begin? First night of Pesach. Huh? No. Uh, April 12th, Saturday night, Saturday night. I say April, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, April 12th says four. So, so Pesach begins on the 15th of Nisan, Hebrew date, but the 14th in the evening is when we have the first Seder. So that's when you, that's why there's a, there's candlesticks on, on April 11 and there's candlesticks on April 12th. That is to signify that on that 
uh, evening of Pesach, we light the candles. And there's also, it, huh? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yes. And then first day is the 13th? The 13th, yeah. But but the reason it's, it has candlesticks on that day is also because that is a Yom Tov. Now I'm going to do the next phase. Okay, so let's say, let's say Shabbat, candles, no work, you know, cook, don't cook, whatever, eat, enjoy. By the way, sex. Did you say that? Okay. It's a mitzvah. It's a double mitzvah on Shabbat to make love. You know, so to or to be take care of each other. You know, uh, to to do nice things. We'll talk about Shabbat more next week. Um, both the 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 uh, the restrictions and the this is on this. Take this home. It's, I also sent it to you. But you have a card copy. Um, that's from um, from Denver. Um, so how, now we have Yom Tov. What is the difference between Yom Tov and and Shabbat? On Yom Tov, you also, we also, don't drive, don't spend money, don't uh, work. But this is where it gets tricky. You can cook as long as you don't light the fire that day. So what do the people do? Again, I'm just telling you the traditional way. Huh? No, no. They kept, they kept, they keep a candle lit or the pilot light or the uh, on low or the, the the oven on low, and it is not. You're not lighting it from scratch. You're just increasing the flame, and that comes from back from again from the time of Hillel. One of the funniest things I ever noticed is if I spent a Shabbat or I spent a uh, Pesach, let's say, with a Chabad rabbi, and it was on Wednesday night. You know, a lot of them smoke. They keep their can a candle over in the corner, not a Shabbat candle. They keep a candle over there. They go over the candle, light their cigarette. <laughs> you know? So is, uh, the reason for that is, uh, halakhically, is <clears throat> they realized that if if Shabbat came and then there was a holiday, it was too hard to say, you can't, you got to have three days straight of cold food. Plus it's Pesach, it's special. So they said you can cook, but, you know, now, you of course for Pesach you typically cook before the holiday begins. You get a hot meal, but the next night what do you do? Well, if you want to have a hot meal, you can keep the oven on. So, all right, that's the only reason I'm saying that is slightly different. Yom Tov is holy day. Is it getting too complicated? Okay, uh, holy day and biblical, biblically based. Okay, now we have to look at. We'll we'll do this uh, with the material that we have. Pass that sheet around, um, and I sent this to you too. Okay, and this is also in the in the in the uh, book too. Okay, so later holidays that were instituted, Hanukkah came in the post biblical period, which we'll be studying anyway. Um, it was. Uh, the the Bible wasn't the Torah wasn't quite can the Bible rather wasn't quite canonized. They hadn't decided which books were going to stay in, but but it happened during Greek times. Okay, that's a very important day. So Hanukkah celebrates the liberation from uh, the Greeks, but it's not a Yom Tov. It's not biblically based. Tu Bishvat, which we're going to get to also, the Jewish tree day, beautiful day, but you can drive. You can do anything you want on Tuba Shvat, including going and planting trees. Um, Purim, definitely Purim. You you can drive anywhere you want on Purim. Just be careful not to drink and drive. Nyah, 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 nyah. But, you know, drinking and, oops, uh, you know, we, we're supposed to be joyful. Getting joyful, dressing up, costumes. But all these three, and there's others as well, but those major ones, Tuba Shvat, uh, Hanukkah, uh, Purim, are post-biblical holidays. They're holidays, they're not holy days. So what does it, what are they called? They're called in Hebrew, let's say this, you've heard the word before, Chag. Chag. Uh, C-H-A-G, transliterations are always hard. So what do you say on uh, Pesach or on um, Sukkot? Chag Sameach. Chag Sameach. Okay. Um, is this the one on Shabbat? No, I'm sorry. What I wanted to look at is this one. Yeah, the Great Wheel. And oh, we got to end in about five minutes, huh? 
So open up to this. This is from the Denver people. And that's why, as I say, when we go to online, uh, I do a lot of original stuff. And I, I mean, it's in my head. We use the books, but the teaching is anywhere you can find it. We printed them out for you, but we sent it to you too. Okay. So. Um, you send it to me. Huh? You Rick, I didn't really, I, I know why, because I didn't have you on that. I, I sent an old list from a couple of weeks ago. I will send it to you. Okay, so the, here on page uh, 52 or whatever it is, the first page inside is a kind of a, a wheel of the year thing. And notice, just like I said, notice that um, <clears throat> Pesach anchors the spring and Shavuot anchors the transition from spring to summer down at the bottom of the cycle. And then Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, all those four holidays, five, if you like, all come in this month. And then, but there was something missing. I mean, not missing, but what happened is, and we'll get to it when we talk about Hanukkah. Hanukkah is a historical event. In Kislev 25 of year 165, they came in, uh, 168, Antiochus outlawed Judaism and uh, took over the temple, da 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 da, and wiped out. Um, you know, the, the, he didn't destroy it, but you know, it was the temple was turned into a shrine for Zeus with pig fat everywhere. So three years later, according to the tradition, uh, the exact same date, they came back in. Okay, but it just happened to be in the middle of December. So what were we missing? We had we had the spring equinox with Pesach, we had the fall equinox with Sukkot, and we had the summer solstice, sort of, with Shavuot. What are we missing? Winter. So Hanukkah, when we get to it, has a seasonal quality to it also. And boy, are we going to feel that here, you know, when the snow comes. Okay, so that's the... the now, I could get to it, but I'm just saying briefly, Tu Bishvat and Purim are kind of interesting. Again, Tu B'Shvat is the holiday of the reawakening after the winter. It's it's not quite spring, but in Israel and certainly here too, you begin to feel the spring in the air or or um, the, the, the first uh, buds begin to blossom on the almond trees or the first chickens start to wake up. Hey, I'm a chicken. You know, <laughs> you know so Tu B'Shvat is pre-spring. Purim is, I want to say, again, it's a historical event, but Purim has a quality also of, it's spring, let's go crazy, you know, so there's that lunar thing. But Pesach is the real spring, you know, celebration. Okay, turn to inside this, <clears throat> and you'll have this at home too. Um, they are called, go to page 54, or whatever it's called, so the three biggies, the three festivals are called, let's say this Hebrew, Shalosh, Shalosh. Rigalim, which means the pilgrimage. This is when they would go to Jerusalem. And it had to go to, you know, that was when people would go, the traips down from the Galilee into Jerusalem. So then we have Shabbat, right? Shabbat is a weekly. We have the high holidays. Um, and then over on the right side are holidays of history. So obviously, I did not cover uh, Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av, or the more recent uh, uh, commemorations uh, of uh, Holocaust Remembrance Day, uh, Memorial Day before uh, Israel Independence Day, and that's the bottom. Yom Hasnaud. Go to the last page, not last page, that 56, 57, and you end up for yourselves right there all the basic uh, symbols and and themes of all the holidays spelled out for you. And, and then on Sukkot, the next page, Sukkot, Shavuot, this is a summary, and it's not meant to be the complete deal. Okay. <laughs> I think we're out of time. Um, but um, I have one more gift for you all. Um, 
and I'll send it to, uh, I think, Justin, you might have this too. I will send and this for you guys in particular. I don't like to teach to a test, meaning, you know, this is what you're going to learn. But if you uh, have this material, you'll know kind of the right answers. And when we get to them, so we haven't done kosher yet. Um, list reasons for keeping Shabbat. Wow, I never thought of that. Okay, there are reasons. I mean, they're not necessarily all the reasons, but why people keep Shabbat. People keep Shabbat because God commanded it. But spiritually, list reasons why people keep kosher. Um, uh, here's another heavy one. Uh, what are the symbols on the Seder plate? Well, we haven't done it yet, but you'll you'll have them. We just did. Um, did we do? Is it in here? Um, yeah, uh, Sukkot. We just did Sukkot. Uh, no, it doesn't tell you the, the, the types of themes, but it, I think it's on another page. Um, but So these are answers to questions that I used to give. So you have the answers. You could do the, I also have the blank. You could you could take the blank and I can send that to you too. So pass this around so everybody has it. Is that is that am I cheating <laughs> by giving you this? There's a whole page on here which we're going to get to. What are the fundamental differences between Judaism and Christianity? Yeah. Huh? No, I got a bunch. They're all here. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. Um. I want to conclude with the coming back to this idea of holy time. <clears throat> and Justin, I know you know this too, because he, Justin took this class through the Denver group. Um, when you are part of a synagogue community or an Israeli community, or uh, even a, like I said, a Jewish community center in, in Denver, let's say it, it's, it's the holidays take on, and this is for you, Zach, too. The holidays take on cultural significance. You don't have to say, I am keeping Sukkot because God commanded me to live in a sukkah. You could say, I like to build this Gilligan's Island hut, you know, and let's have fun, kids. So, going back to my original thing from a few weeks ago mm -hmm. um, culture, ethnicity, peoplehood. So we can say, this is our people, and, th and the Native Americans think this way, and so do the Chinese and the Indians. They don't sit around and say, um, Shiva commanded me to do this, or the Great Spirit commanded me. It's our way. It's our way. The only problem is we live in America. We live in a secular society. So this is going to get to some of what I've talked about with Kaplan's ideas. We're living in two civilizations. We're consist constantly kind of going back and forth between the Jewish time and the American time. Sometimes they seem to have coincidences, like when, you know, I said, and you all know this by now, uh, the pilgrims came to America and they looked in their Bible and they said, this is really a time to celebrate. Oh, what did they used to do in the Bible? They would have a harvest festival. Boom, let's have a harvest festival. And it became the roots of Thanksgiving. Technically, by the way, uh, so you don't think I'm um, making stuff up, Thanksgiving was not instituted as a holiday until after, anybody guess? Civil War. Lincoln, Lincoln was trying to come up with a way, it wasn't his brainstorm, but it, it was a way of bringing the country back together. And there was a woman, yes. Yeah, yeah. Go, so. That's right. That's right. You're right. There was a... It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, it was prior to that time, it was kind of among the whatever, some of the uh, Quakers and Shakers would do it. So it goes all the way back to the Pilgrim's time, but it didn't really become a holiday until then. And it really didn't become a an active holiday. Oh, I don't get me started. American holidays kind of are based on, you know, um, buying things. Mother's Day <laughs> had a very important history too, but it wasn't until Harbor came up with it, you know, like buy a card for your mother. All right, guys. Um, 
Roy, make sure that um, I will make sure that Dave gives me your email and we'll get in touch. And everybody who lives here in town, obviously, Taylor and Roy, if you want to, no, I'm no, no pressure, is invited Thursday night to come. Oh, Dave's back. Yep. <clears throat> Thursday night to the Simcha Torah. The context to repeat, we, we take out several of our Torahs, not all of them. Um, I started to say before and I didn't finish. Simcha Torah is so joyous that some places do also, you know, make it frivolity. The rabbis are dancing, and there used to be a, a custom that the kids would go around and tie the rabbi's taluses to, together. So these two rabbis are walking away from each other, and taluses are tied together. Um, but it's joyous, whereas Purim is silly joyous. Yeah, the, 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 okay. All right. Um, uh, so uh, is, well, is everybody going to be okay if we go to online next week? Yes? Mm -hmm. That way... That way, I will send you an stuff that we will then look at in the in the uh, or, or online. <clears throat> Please take some tzibuli home. Um, and um, uh, Justin, good to see you. Zach, will talk some more. Okay, I, where, what synagogue are you guys going to now? Justin and Zach, what's Hebrew what, Educational Alliance? You're going more. It's more conservative than you've ever had before. Oh yeah, it's it's pretty conservative. Oh yeah, mm. and it's interesting. And isn't it a drive? What's that? Isn't it a more of a drive? Um, it's about forty-five minutes from us. I see. Okay, interesting. That's not too bad. I love these. I'll take another one. Okay. All right. Um, I'll see everybody next Tuesday. I'll see most of you Thursday or Friday. I'm too. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Dave, this was. Sorry, you're breaking up a little bit. Is it recorded? Everything was done. Uh, everything's recorded. I'm going to stop the recording and I'll say good, good night to everybody and end the Zoom call. Good night, Gracie. So, okay. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.